Live from KSA 12, the news at 530 starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Tonight kicks off the first night of Hanukkah here in San Antonio. That means the 25th annual Hanukkah on the River celebration. Yeah, our Lee Waldman is live at the Arneson Theater where a concert and ceremony just wrapped up. Lee, this is such a fun event every year. Oh, Courtney, Tim, y'all missed out. This was an incredible, incredible event. You can see the lights on the menorah burning bright down there on the stage. That is what this holiday is all about. Mayor Ron Nuremberg joined members of the Jewish community for this beloved tradition. Families gathered on the steps of the Arneson Theater for the ceremony, happily enjoyed some treats and the sounds of the mariachi, and of course, an amazing concert by the Maccabees. We spoke with Rob A. Block, with Rob, Rob, Rob block from the Shabbat Center. He says Hanukkah is all about the celebration of light and driving out darkness from our community. Block says the celebration today is about religious freedom and positivity, which is needed more than ever. And a little bit of light dispels a lot of darkness. And there's a lot of darkness in this world. So we need to bring even more light to the surface and, and appreciate God's gifts. Rabbi Block says one of his favorite parts about this Hanukkah on the river is the fact that people from all faiths come together to enjoy this celebration. He says he hopes this beloved tradition sticks around for another 25 years to come. Live at the Arneson, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. A great event. Thank you so much, Lee. Well, a toy drive making the holiday special for refugee families. This morning, Bring Joy SA gave out toys to more than 300 refugee children. Many of the families have relocated to San Antonio from Africa, the Middle East, and Asia due to conflict. Organizers say they want all the children and their families to feel welcome to our community this holiday season. We value the, the contributions of this diverse community and, and we want to make sure that their culture is celebrated but also the, the, the culture and, and the identity of our uh, city and, and city, San Antonio. Over the last 10 years, Bring Joy SA has helped more than 3,000 refugee children. And for so many other families, holiday shopping can be tough, especially as inflation keeps toy prices high and other expenses keep going up. Camelia Juarez tells us why the Toys for Tots project always makes a big difference for some local families. Bikes, tech toys, something for every child. All donated by the community for Toys for Tots. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Hi! Cynthia Tony. Hi, how are you? Where can I put these for um, in, We can put it in the back. In the back? Cynthia Tony is a mother of eight. She says the help will allow her to focus on other important purchases. Thank you. Merry Christmas. It helps us, like, that weight come off of our chest. Jerry Salinas has several grandchildren. He says these gifts are great for little kids. Any little gifts for them, they get all excited. This is just one family out of 10,000 families that have been helped by Toys for Tots here in the San Antonio area. Gunnery Sergeant Jesus Cincineros grew up in a family of 10. He says he knows how important these toys are for some families. It's kind of come full circle. Now it's my turn to give back. That first car pulls in to the moment that first bag of toys goes to their car, it's all worth it. Camelia Juarez, case at 12 News. Two people are recovering in the hospital after a head-on crash on the city's south side. This happened at 125 this afternoon in the 2700 block of Roosevelt Avenue near South Cross. Police say a 70-year-old man in a sedan hit a Mustang head-on. The man was then trapped inside his car and had to be cut out by firefighters. He was taken to a nearby hospital in serious condition. A female passenger in the Mustang was also taken to the hospital. She's expected to be okay. We're still waiting to hear about the driver's condition. An officer say the Mustang was speeding at the time, but it's unclear which driver was driving the wrong way. A man is in police custody tonight after allegedly robbing someone at gunpoint while impersonating a police officer. According to an arrest affidavit, 19 year old David Morales seen here was seen impersonating an officer near Lytle and then robbing someone on the side of the road back in July. The officer who saw Morales says there were two people on the ground zip tied while Morales was pointing an AR-15 at them. Lytle police tried stopping Morales that night but he was able to drive away. The two victims said to, they thought that he was a real officer. The affidavit states uh, Texas Rangers got a search warrant for his phone and they found photos of Morales wearing stolen Chavano Park police uh, gear. He's now charged with aggravated robbery, impersonating a public servant and evading arrest. His bond set at $165,000. 
A man is recovering in the hospital tonight after trying to stop people breaking into his vehicle. It happened around 1:45 this morning in the 4600 block of Clark Avenue. That's on the southeast side. San Antonio police say the man was shot in the chest while confronting three people breaking into his car. The victim was taken to a hospital in critical condition. SAPD did not release any information about those suspects. An overnight crash near downtown sends two children to the hospital. This happened around 145 in the uh, 2800 block of I-10 South on the lower level. Now, according to police, a man, woman, and their two children in a Ford Explorer were hit by a truck that veered into their lane. Officers say a seven-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl were taken to the hospital with minor head injuries. The parents were not injured. The other driver sped off and so far has not been found. Police say the driver will be charged with failure to stop and render aid. Still ahead on the news at 530, Title 42 is ending in just a few days. Why Texas Governor Greg Abbott is predicting a catastrophe at the Texas-Mexico border. Border authorities are preparing for unprecedented levels of migration across the southwest. Officials bracing for the possible end to Title 42 this Wednesday. It has allowed the U.S. to expel upward of 2 million migrants from the border. ABC's Zareen Shah reports U.S. Border Patrol in El Paso says more than 2,200 arrests are being made every day. Over the past week, roughly 2,500 migrants have crossed into El Paso, Texas every day. City officials there declaring a state of emergency. I really believe that today our asylum seekers are not safe. The mayor saying the emergency declaration would give city authorities the resources to shelter migrants who have crossed the Mexican border. Millions of migrants are making the dangerous journey from Latin America, hoping to flee poverty and violence in their home countries. We saw 2,500 in the past six, seven days. We can imagine what it's going to be. That's doubling the flow. We want to make sure we're prepared for that and that we can react to that. Title 42 is a Trump administration policy implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic, allowing the government to expel migrants immediately as a public health risk. Texas Governor Greg Abbott predicting chaos if Title 42 is lifted. When you have people coming across the globe without knowing at all what their health status is, that almost by definition is a public health risk. California Democratic Senator Alex Padilla says the Biden administration has been planning for the end of 42 and places blame with the Trump administration. The prior administration starved the very departments and agencies of the resources they need, not just to to, to uh, patrol the border, but to process these lawful uh, asylum claims. A U.S. Court of Appeals panel in Washington, D.C. blocked efforts led by 19 GOP states challenging the rule's expiration date of December 21st. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, here in San Antonio this Sunday evening, taking a look outside with live cam. You can see the cloud cover has made its return as we are wrapping up any of those weekend plans. It was a chilly start earlier this morning, and overall it has been a pretty cool afternoon across south central Texas. We'll get you a brief look at temperatures across the area currently in the 50s for most, a few upper 40s just north of Bear County. Stepping up for any evening plans here in town, we'll see those temperatures fall through the low 50s and eventually into the upper 40s tonight. But through the overnight, we are expecting an uptick in rain chances. Some scattered showers will accompany some for the Monday morning drive. We'll get you a look at that, plus an early look at that bitter cold air that's still expected to arrive late week after the break. We've had a couple sample size tastes of winter so far this year, but we're about yeah. to get a real dose of it. Yes, absolutely. A pretty cold one. We are expecting a big push of some Arctic air to kind of move through the majority of the lower 48 just ahead of the holiday weekend. That front looks to arrive here in South Central Texas on Thursday, and that is going to send those big changes into the region Friday and all the way through Christmas Eve and Christmas Day as well. But before we can get there, we do have the chance to find some scattered showers out there overnight tonight and into our Monday morning. So that's something to be aware of if you are stepping out for the Monday morning drive. It's not going to be for everybody, and generally that should move eastward throughout the second half of the day. But it could be a damp start for some. Throughout 
throughout the Monday morning plans you may have. Tuesday and Wednesday, fairly quiet days out there. Chilly mornings in the 40s, followed by cool afternoons in the 50s. But then we see those big changes arrive on Thursday as that Arctic cold front moves in. And that will set us up for a few hard freezes, especially by Friday morning and into Saturday morning as well. So we'll talk all about it starting off though with a look here across the area this Sunday evening at satellite and radar. Nothing really out there in terms of rain just yet, but of course we do have the cloud cover on hand. As we take a look farther off to our west, you can see some scattered rain making its way into far west Texas, into the Texas Panhandle as well, and even some snow across the higher elevations out there in New Mexico. That is associated with a little dip in the jet stream, an area of low pressure that's going to track eastward here over the next 12 hours and as it moves into the upper levels of our atmosphere here in the Lone Star State at the same time overnight tonight an area of low pressure at the surface is going to develop to our southeast closer to the Texas Gulf coastline combine those two things together and we are expecting that uptick in rain chances overnight tonight and into Monday morning so again if you are stepping out tomorrow morning maybe give yourself a little bit of extra time out there on the roadways and pack the rain gear for the most and the majority of the area, we're expecting that activity along and east of the I-35 corridor, maybe an isolated rumble of thunder in our far eastern counties. But as we head into Monday afternoon, the bulk of that activity is going to shift well off to our east. And it's possible we even see some peaks of sunshine out there in our far western counties before the day is done. Now, temperature wise, it'll be a chilly start out there in the 40s. Again, the cloud cover here in San Antonio is expected to stick with us throughout the majority of the day, which means highs should only reach for the low to mid 50s. However, high temperatures tomorrow are going to be pretty dependent on the cloud cover out there. Again, with more cloud cover farther east, temperatures likely just in the low 50s tomorrow afternoon with a few more peaks of sunshine. Out west, temperatures could be closer to 60 tomorrow afternoon, so we'll keep eyes on that. Again, quiet Tuesday and Wednesday, but those big changes arrive on Thursday as we see that Arctic cold front move into the state of Texas. So Wednesday morning, that Arctic air is across the northern tier of the lower 48 here. Watch what happens by Thursday morning. It starts to make its way into the Lone Star State. We see that front move into our neck of the woods Thursday afternoon. A gusty north wind is going to pick up and then we are going to see that bitterly cold air move into our area. Hard freeze expected Friday and Saturday mornings by Friday morning. Some wind chills in the single digits possible there as well. So if you're planning on traveling this week, Weekend, use the next couple of days to winterize your home. Of course, take care of the four P's, people, pets, plants, and your pipes, because it is looking to be pretty cold out there as we head into the holiday weekend, guys. Oh yeah, we're insulating pipes tomorrow. <laughs> Hope everything's fine. Makes my cold heart happy. That we're gonna have cold <laughs> weather for Christmas. All right, Larry, uh, I had no dog in a fight between the Cowboys and the Jags, but that was an entertaining game today. It really was. And all week long, Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott talked about how frustrated he is at turning the ball over. Well, Dak certainly definitely frustrated after this one because the Jaguars picked them off at the end took it back for the game winner. And the Houston Texans, well, they summered, suffered a similar loss today thanks to Davis Mills and his costly turnover in overtime. Coming up. We got to learn how to play 48 minutes. Um, I mean, we competed for the for three quarters, and in the fourth quarter, we kind of let it slip. So uh, just taking it away, being a young team, we got to sit here and learn how to close out games. The Spurs looked like they were going to sweep the Miami Heat this season, but that didn't happen thanks in part to a bad fourth quarter in big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys at the Jaguars this afternoon. At one point, it certainly looked like the boys were going to win this one. Late second quarter, Dak Prescott, play action, rolls to his right. He connects with Noah Brown. One yard touchdown, and Dallas leads it 21-7. And at halftime, that was the score. They led 27-10 in the third, but couldn't hold the lead. Fourth quarter, Cowboys down 20 
27-31. Dak avoids pressure, then delivers a strike to Noah Brown in the end zone, and Dallas takes back the lead 34-31. The Jags would tie this with a 48-yard field goal as time expired to force overtime, tied at 34, and that's when disaster strikes. Dak throws to Brown. He can't hang on to the ball, and Rayshon Jenkins picks it off and races back 51 yards for a game-winning pick six. Jaguars stun the Cowboys 40-34 in overtime, and here's Dak on his costly interception. Frustration grows, obviously. Uh, you, to end the game on a pick six, um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's frustrating. Um, and not only that, as I said, the first one, uh, yeah, I mean, I just got to not even try to throw the ball right there. Feel, feel the guy grab me and just tuck the ball and um, take the sack and just and just move on, move on to the next play. And uh, that, that's, that, that's that balance. And um, obviously, I'll learn from it and uh, tuck it next time. So um, it's, it's tough. It's tough treading that line, trying to make a play, trying to be aggressive, and at the same time, um, not putting the ball at risk. Uh, so, yeah. Texans hosting the Chiefs, pick it up tight at 24 on overtime. Texans deep in their own territory. Quarterback Davis Mills with nowhere to pass, so he runs and he gets hit from behind, losing the ball. The fight to recover it ensues, and the Chiefs come up with the ball. Now, it looked like the Texans had it, but Willie Gay comes out with it. Next play, the Chiefs cash in. Handoff goes to Jarek McKinnon, and he takes it to the house. 26 yards to hand the Texans a brutal defeat, 30-24. to Houston led this game on three different occasions, but still fall. Their only turnover on the day was certainly a costly one. On Thursday, UTSA and Troy took part in the U.S. Hunger Food Packing Project as part of the Cure Bowl Week festivities. The Red Little Jambalaya will be donated to families across Central Florida. We mic'd up Roadrunners quarterback Frank Harris for the event, and of course, he had a good time with his teammates. I do. I'll put your hand on the table and I'll show you guys what to do in a minute. I want to get poor. I want to do what Jalop is doing. That's fish food right there. That's what that is? <laughs> it looks like it. I'm like that. What's that on the stupid? I got a rock. What did I just say? Hey, bro. I'm about to walk around. Help somebody else. Do some work, Frank. Coach. I was holding the bag just like you was doing. Oh, so you just get the, you gotta be in front of the camera, you don't, you don't got to do it? Trust me, I was over here working. I'm sweating already. Hey, do some work. Come on, Frank. I've been doing this whole time. You don't know instructions, you went to Judson. <laughs> hey, you gotta put your hair in, bro. Uh, you don't want hair in their food. The World Cup final between France and Argentina in Qatar was awesome. Argentina led 2-0 in the first half. France scored twice in the second half, sending this to extra time. 108th minute, Argentina pushing down the field. Lautaro Martinez has a shot blocked, but Lionel Messi is able to find the ball, put it back into the net for his second goal, and Argentina takes the lead 3-2. 118th minute, France with a PK, and Kylian Mbappe converts the penalty kick for a goal. France ties it at 3-all, and that's a hat trick for Mbappe. This match is heading to a penalty shootout. Gonzalo Montiel lines up for Argentina's fourth penalty kick. He converts, and Argentina claims a 2022 World Cup 4-2 on penalties for Messi's first World Cup victory. The NBA, the Spurs let one get away yesterday in Mexico City. They led the Miami Heat 84-80 heading into the fourth quarter. But Miami outscored the Spurs 31-17 in the final frame to beat the Silver and Black 111-101. Not getting the win stinks, but the Spurs still had a fun time in Mexico. Yeah, uh, it was a great opportunity uh, to be able to come out here. It was a blessing. Uh, we had some great food. We went to a couple of different restaurants. Um, I mean, it was great being out here. Uh, hopefully we can play back out here again and next time get a win. Up next for the Spurs, they will play at the Houston Rockets tomorrow at 7 p.m. Congratulations to the Texas Longhorns who beat Louisville last night, 3-0, to win the 2022 NCAA Volleyball Championship. National Player of the Year, Logan Eggleston, was sensational in this matchup. She recorded 19 kills to pace the Horns' attack. It's the Horns' first national championship since 2012. Volleyball school. Yeah, Courtney, you're happy about that, aren't you? <laughs> Volleyball Next school. Lady Longhorns. That's great. I love. I loved watching that. It was amazing. Good Thank job, you, Larry. We'll be right back.
All right, 51 over at the airport this hour, 50 up in Bulverde, 49 over in Bandera. It will be cool out there if stepping out for any evening plans. A chilly start tomorrow with some morning scattered showers. That moves east throughout the afternoon. Quiet Tuesday and Wednesday for the most part. And then those big changes move in on Thursday with that Arctic cold front leading to a few mornings with some hard freezes here in San Antonio. Good news is into the afternoons in town. We should warm things up a bit, guys. No shorts for Santa in San Antonio this year. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you here at 10.